back with another question. This is from Magno and it concerns sound, noise. He lives near a busy road. He's thinking about having acoustic glass fitted to his windows to try and deaden the sound of the traffic. Is it a good idea, he asks. It's not the first thing I'd rush into. It certainly can make a difference. The problem with sound deadening, let's call it sound reduction, not sound proofing, because you never get rid of a noise completely. But if you can deaden it, it's worth a lot. You can spend a lot of money doing it and achieve very little. We need to think about the whole situation before we just go and look at changing the glass in a window. For one thing, you could change to acoustic glass and you could find that the frame itself and micro gaps around the windows, around the frame, and even things like trickle vents would still allow the noise to come through. Let's just take a step back and look at what the problem is with noise. If you get a big wave oscillation, that's a low pitched noise, a rumble. You can generally hear a rumble a long way away. It can be quite annoying if somebody is driving around in a car with a boom, boom, boom from quite a distance. And then you get the high pitched noise, which is a very sharp, small sound waves. That would be things like children's voices, for example, which cut through the air in a way that you might not be able to tolerate. When you look at traffic noise, traffic noise noise is mostly made up of low rumble it's not generally high pitched then you get a motorbike coming past or some idiot who's adapted his exhaust pipe because he thinks it's going to impress everybody when he roars around the streets but generally traffic is getting quieter we keep the noise of vehicles down and very often it's the noise of the tires on the road which are causing problems and actually even those are now governed by legislation so hopefully things get quieter but for magno he's got this problem with the traffic noise he thinks it's coming through the window so the first thing i'd do get an upturned glass and just listen to how much noise is actually transmitting through and then do the same with the wall maybe even do the same with the ceiling because the noise will be coming into the building in a lot of different ways now when those sound waves hit a the surface they are deadened to a certain extent and the more dense the heavier the surface the more suppression it's going to give to the sound if you think about a sheet of glass generally say about four mil thick if you could change that to a 12 mil thick sheet of glass which would be very heavy indeed but a plate glass that would deaden the sound a lot more so how does acoustic glass work well the best of it is to have two different thicknesses of glass because once the sound has been through one thickness and it's adapted it's adjusted its sound wave to get through the first one we then want to confuse it by sending it through a different thickness so that it's got to a adapt again and every time it has to adapt every time it passes through something it reduces the sound it loses its power and it's that power it's that pressure on our eardrums which is really the problem now as i've got older my hearing has deteriorated quite a lot mainly from using kangos in basements and things like that when i don't hear what my wife says sometimes that's totally selective she shouts to try and get me to hear and i say no that's not what i want what i want is better spacing between the words i want a little bit more variety if people send you something in a monotone way it's very difficult to pick out the nuances and so when it's going through glass or walls it deadens the sound but we still get sound coming through there but the waves aren't so acute we can't necessarily tell the difference between the high pitches and the low pitches if you've got acoustic glass double glazed glass what they do is they put one thickness of glass in say four millimeters then they would put a film on the inside and then another sheet of glass an air gap and then another thickness of glass to try and reduce it but if you just simply take out your existing glass and put in that new glass you may find that it does hardly anything at all to reduce the sound so magno says he's also got cavity walls it's a 1930s house should he get those walls filled with some kind of insulation well the insulation is quite fluffy and as i've said previously the more dense the material the better it is at deadening the sound but there is certainly some benefit when i had my walls filled with cavity insulation we noticed that closing of doors and things like that in the house was deadened to a certain extent and that's because the sound was entering the walls entering the fabric of the building and traveling around in that way it wasn't airborne sound it was what we call structural 
noise. It did help in that respect and it certainly wouldn't do any harm. It would reduce the sound a little bit. Similarly, if you go up into the loft and you check the insulation in the loft, look for any gaps, anything like that, then you can improve that a great deal. You can even use some rock wall bats up there, which are different to the more fluffy insulation. The weave of those is such that that reduces sound as well. There's a lot to do, but what I would start off with Magno is to hang some blankets over the windows and see how much difference that makes to the overall sound transmission. And you may like to think about then getting some heavy curtains. I know you don't want to have them drawn all day long, but in the evening and at, you know night, you may just simply solve the problem to a certain extent with some acoustic lined curtains, which are very effective indeed, or some shutters or secondary glazing. Now, secondary glazing looks a bit naff. Nobody really likes it these days, but it used to be quite popular and it was highly effective at reducing sound because you get a nice big gap between your existing window in the secondary glazing so the sound's got to travel across that gap and it loses power doing it but similarly shutters you know if you get roller shutters okay they may look a bit wrong in the building i don't know you can also get shutters obviously which just fold across the window depends how big the window is as to whether that's effective but when i've stayed in buildings abroad with shutters and you close them at night it does make a, a tremendous difference and also to the thermal insulation of the building so these things are all worth considering but i think you've got to look at it and think about where you're going to get the best bang for your bucks anyway i hope that helps and i hope it helps other people who are suffering from noise because it is a very tricky subject if you've got a question send it in to us we're always interested we like a bit of variety so if you've got something you feel we haven't covered before don't think that that means we won't cover it or can't cover it it just means that we haven't had that particular question coming up very much and if you want to do us a favor if you want to keep the channel alive and thriving watch another video for us will you because the numbers are low at the moment we need to do something to keep the lights on